So could emotions or feelings such as anger or frustration or depression actually be positive, actually have positive usages? And by our act of trying to medicate it and suppress it and get rid of it and repress it and pretend it doesn't exist, could we perhaps be denying ourselves a valuable piece of human experience? Could we actually be causing ourselves more problems in the long term? Could we actually be denying ourselves a deep source of wisdom? And the answer to that is probably yes, obviously depending on the situation and depending upon really understanding a few simple things. These are things which pretty much anyone can observe, <laughs> anyone can look at, but for some reason our existing system of psychiatry and psychology isn't necessarily that uh, keen on. And even most of our religious and even new agey or alternative things are not really that keen on. And there seems to be a real distinct intention and effort to sort of dehumanize us, both kind of in the mainstream where our lives are supposed to fit into this little box, this little, this little spectrum of defined normality and anything outside of that is needs, needs to be medicated or it's a disorder or an imbalance or whatever. But those are always asking compared to what? And if you grow up in a pretty insane, crazy, fucked up environment, having a negative reaction to that might be the most natural common sense response to that. So that's one side. And on the other side, people are raised in this world. They have all these programs running. They have all these implicit ideas and its assumptions and intentions running in the mind. Then they jump to new agey or they jump to spirituality sort of things or yoga or meditation or whatever. And it's the same deal. It's like, all right, these are the good experiences. This is the good stuff that you can have. You have to be nice, you have to be compassionate, you have to be loving. You have to be understanding. You have to be all of these things. And all that negative stuff, your anger, your bitterness, your frustration, your judgment, your resentment, your depression, all that is bad. It has to go. And actually it's keeping you blah, 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 blah. But the truth of the matter is that probably the deepest spiritual teaching that we could have is going to come from inside of ourselves from that natural emotion or feeling or that, uh, the manifestation of that natural process that we're trying to get rid of through medication or through any other different means. Now, obviously, we have to understand that this isn't, this isn't absolutely true all the time. There are obviously instances where people need certain modalities, people need certain techniques. That's obvious. That's common sense. <laughs> That's not what we're saying here. What we're talking about is understanding, number one, that most of the time we forget this basic thing, which is the cyclical and or phasic nature of things. Cycle meaning kind of like a wave. It goes up and it goes down. It goes up and it goes down. And it's phasic, same idea, you know, and basically cyclical sort of going around. Meaning we have, we can look out in the natural world. Leaves fall off a tree, then they break down, they turn into earth, and the tree grows new leaves. It grows fruits. Fruits then have seeds, seeds become trees, whatever. We look at, uh, <laughs> we look at uh, water, water evaporates, becomes steam, it goes up into the clouds, goes back down. It's a whole cycle of water. Everyone looks at that and it's like, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, science said it, so it must be true, so yeah, whatever. But we don't actually use our own uh, observation and understand, wow, you know, there's all these seasons. You know, there's these cycles. Perhaps cycles could be existing inside of me too. So this brings us to the, the biggest idea, which is people look at their own psyche, their own process, their own life as kind of somewhere else. It's, or even as in extremes, as kind of a, a lifeless, dead thing. It's this stupid, blind, mechanical process of, oh, it's this disorder, or it's that process, or it's this very mechanical, very sort of detached. But perhaps in the same way that clouds move through the sky and the nature goes through different cycles, perhaps the same intelligence, the same living process is blowing through our psyche. So we understand the cyclical or phasic nature of things. Number two is people forget that emotions and feelings exist on a spectrum. And that spectrum might be different for everyone. Everyone has a different spectrum. 
But the thing is, is two ends of a spectrum, or any point on the spectrum, is still on the spectrum, and is still a part of the spectrum, which only makes sense in contrast with the rest of the spectrum. And removed from the spectrum doesn't really have much, doesn't really do much. And that the spectrum can be looked at as made up of a bunch of things, or can be looked at as one process or one thing. In that a spectrum is a whole entity. We, you know, in the same way we could have two sides of a coin, two sides of a magnet, or you know, two sides of a stick, or two sides of a knife, or whatever. Yeah, they might be two sides, they might be north and south, but they're part of the same magnet, it's the same thing. So you can look at it as separate, you can look at it as basically the same, but the fact of the matter is it's, it's one thing. And thirdly, what we might call negative emotions can oftentimes have positive usages and really contain deep wisdom and messages. And what the problem becomes is when we define our spectrum and say, well, this is the only, this is the only good part right here. I mean, you don't really need the rest of it. It's all stupid or it's all deep, dark, unconscious, negative things. We don't need that. It's all terrible. We got to just stay right here. And a large degree of what is popularly sold as spirituality or new age or consciousness is that exact idea. Well, this is the, this is the best part of the spectrum. You know, this is the bliss consciousness. This is the whatever consciousness. And we're just going to stay here. You know, fuck, who cares about the fact that everything in nature is always moving and changing all the time? Who cares the fact that, that, that basically we can all observe if water doesn't move, it stagnates and becomes pretty inhospitable to what we might call probiotic or things which are for life. Who cares about all these natural things which anyone can observe with a few minutes of observation? Let's ignore all of that and just say, you know what? I know better. I've been on this planet for however many years. I know better than the rest of the world, so I'm just going to take myself away from that. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. And it's only when we become stuck or fixated around one, one thing that this has become a real issue, meaning we get stuck on our depression stuck on our anger, stuck in our frustration, or stuck on our joy. And that's that's our only way of relating to things. And that's not really real. That's contradicts um, the vast majority of reality. Whether you want to look at it observationally, you want to look at quantum physics, you want to look at a lot of different things, it's a contradiction. So it's probably not going to be that sustainable. or probably going to take a lot of effort Kind of like monocropping, monocultures. Yeah, you can do it, but it's not really real, and it takes a shitload of time and energy and resources just to maintain it. But ultimately, it's destined to futility, and it's destined to fail because it's kind of based on not really good foundations. So the next thing is number four, which is quickly and pretty much always consciousness, spirit, or the self and nature. It's all left at the door. It's all just taken out and removed from our thinking, removed from our awareness. And that really causes us to split from ourselves, to split from our body, to cause all these divisions. Left brain, right brain, conscious, unconscious, superconscious, higher self, lower self, middle self, animal self, spiritual self, energy self. So all these fucking divisions. And then we have that same division in our um, spectrum. You know, oh, this is the only part of myself that I want to experience, but all this other stuff, I don't want it. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to I just pretend like it doesn't exist. It's not me. That's who I was, or that's this, or that's someone else. We're just putting the blame everywhere else, you know? And again, division, disempowerment. All these words kind of go back to the same sort of thing. But again, if it causes us to split away from our consciousness, or what we might call our self, or our spirit, that's cutting us from nature, because those things are nature. And it's because people believe, you know, you came into this world, right? Oh, oh yeah, I came into this world. Well, from where? People say, oh, it was a spiritual realm. I came from a spiritual realm. Maybe, but maybe you came out of this world. Maybe that's a better way of looking at it. And not to say that that's an, a materialistic or mechanical way of looking at it. It's actually quite the opposite, which is a different conversation. But in the same way that a tree or a plant or any organism in our reality came out of the world because it's depending upon everything else in reality, the environment and all these things which allow it to grow and come out. That's a bit more accurate as far as how we came out of the world, not into it. 
but it's that fundamental split that happens immediately. And then all of that basically leads us up to number five, which is kind of the real trend of living in a really over-medicated and almost really hypochondriac kind of society where we're so divided from ourselves and we're so divided from everyone else, we're divided from nature and it's just, the thing is, is there's nothing necessarily wrong with those things because there's in, in fact inherent uses in having these social constructs and having time and having calendars and having street names and having currency. It makes life much more convenient and easy most of the time. Sure, it has its downsides, but whatever. The point is that when we actually just completely think that, oh, that's really, that's really the way things are, and we don't necessarily take time to really observe, hmm, I don't know about that, you know? Like, maybe let me investigate. Let me, instead of just swallowing answers from the world and swallowing information from everyone else, let me maybe fall in love with the act of questioning or the act of just observation or the act of just trying to interfere maybe a little bit less and just see what happens or trying something that resonates with us, whatever that might be. So hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully it's uh, giving you some food for thought. Maybe it's total garbage and you hate it and you totally disagree with it. It's totally fine too. I don't really care either way, honestly. Uh, so it's a long conversation that we could have, but I'm trying to be brief on this. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And if you like the video, subscribe. If you hate the video, you should still subscribe. <laughs> So subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be posting more stuff soon. Uh, and I'll talk to you soon.